study after study that women show an in-group gender favoritism. One of the questions I've always asked myself is, do women make good teachers? And again, my own personal experiences say absolutely not. But I do realize that my experiences may not be the norm. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of studies to cite that will conclusively answer this most important question. So here I'm going to the results, so I guess a little bit of logical deduction and a few studies that tackle this question in a kind of roundabout fashion. So the first thing to say is that schools fail to educate at least 30% of the students. That's a statistical fact. Again, it's in the, uh, in the description bar where you'll have all of the references. The majority of the school teachers are female. Now, of course, that, of course, doesn't suggest, you know, hey, that women are automatically bad teachers. So, so let's just go on a little bit here. So most of the urban and rural students are primarily from families below the poverty level. They're not even getting a rudimentary education. The United States has a 30% rate of, uh, of students failing to graduate high school. And these numbers are eerily similar in the UK. This is an epidemic of failure that costs our societies billions in lost productivity and ultimately higher crime rates. So why might this be? Could it be because teachers are more focused on managing behavior and policing thought rather than facilitating actual learning? Well, according to a study uh, cited in The Guardian, this might just be the case. The article concludes that girls are getting better grades to reward good behavior. Teachers award higher marks to girls than boys because they are better behaved in the classroom. According to the report, the favoring of girls started at primary school and could have an effect on a child's life all the way through university. So for sure, we have the data. One of the things that I'm constantly faced with whenever I go online is this supposed redeeming quality of the human female, which is her ability to empathize with others. You see, the problem with empathy as a concept, you know, I, I had a discussion with Stardust, a thinking ape about this, and he really made a very, very valid observation that empathy is one of those things that we perceive as being good, but, but actually in a lot of social situations, isn't a very, very positive thing. You see, it's, it, it's, it's two things rolled into one. But the first is the ability to read the emo emotions of others. And, and the second is an adjustment of your behavior so you act sympathetically towards that person. Empathy isn't about being fair. Empathy leads to bias and prejudgment that harms boys in the school system. And, and this is seen in stark clarity in a, in a really, really m remarkable bit of research that shows that teachers mark um, children's work according to how they feel about particular pupils. And, and again, this makes a lot of sense because most of the teachers are female. So of course, they'll mark according to how they feel about the student. So within the study, nearly two thirds of the moderators said they thought that teachers' personal feeling about a particular student influenced their assessment on some occasions or on a regular basis. In the study, the children who provide longer stories or had very neat handwriting were also more likely to receive better marks, regardless of the quality of their writing most of the moderators said. So Professor Alan Smithers, the director of Center for Education and Employment Research at Buckingham University said this, and this is probably one of the most honest and impactful statements I've ever heard from the academic community with regards to this matter. So this is a quote, it is a failure to understand human nature to rely on teacher assessments. And I would go a little bit further here to say, not only is it a failure to understand human nature or to rely on teacher assessment, it's specifically a failure to understand female nature. Because of course, most of the teachers are female, and as a society, we still perceive teaching of the young to be a female occupation. And then he went on to say, if the results are going to be used to judge schools and teachers, you would expect teachers to be as optimistic in their masking as possible. When teachers know the pupils, they're going to be influenced by all sorts of extraneous things, such as whether they like the pupil. Some staff are more favorably disposed to female than male pupils, for instance. Some employ stereotypes, such as expecting Chinese pupils to do well, but not expecting too much uh, from, let's say, male students. Female teachers, it seems, lack the ability to grade fairly. So their redeeming quality, this 
ability to empathize with others actually makes them substandard educators for boys. So just before getting into the data for single sex versus mixed sex education, what I want to give you all, just in case anybody has forgotten, but I'm sure a lot of you still remember, is a typical day for a student in a public school. And this typical day was taken from a website of a UK school. So the children do their early morning work while their class teacher takes the attendance register. The attendance of every child attending school each morning and afternoon is recorded in a special book. The teacher reads out each child's uh, name in turn. Upon hearing his or her name, the child replies, yes, Mrs., you know, insert the teacher's name. And the teacher notes down in the book whether the child is in school or not. At 9, 10 a.m., the children go on to the assembly in our main hall. They sit in the f uh, they sit on the floor in rows with the youngest children at the front and the oldest children at the back. I remember that very clearly as a child. As the children enter the hall, they listen quietly to music playing. Each week has a different musical theme, and the children are asked to listen out for particular things. In our assemblies, the children listen to a story, sing a song, and pray. The story is either taken from the Christian Bible or is a story with a moral. The first lesson of the day begins at 9.30 a.m. and lasts for an hour. Our morning lessons are usually literacy, and they put English or numeracy mathematics. Each of the, these lessons lasts for an hour. The children have their morning break from 10.20 a.m. to 10.35 a.m. At the end of the break time, the teacher blows a whistle. The children stand still and wait to be told to line up in their classes. Now, does any of that sound appealing to you as a man? Would that not drive you to, to fidget or, or just want to be outside doing something you actually find fucking interesting? So the school's website goes on to state that three classrooms now have an interactive whiteboard with data projectors. Well, how tedious. Whiteboards and data projectors are ideal, it seems, for the way girls like to learn, but are lethal to the average male's development. So there is actually a lot of data about the differences between single sex versus mixed sex education. Let's begin with two recent studies in which students were randomly assigned to either a single uh, gendered or co-ed uh, classroom, co-ed being a mixed sex uh, education. So in October 2012, an article published by the journal Demography titled Causal Effects of Single Sex Schools on College Entrance Exams and College Attendance, Random Assignments in Seoul High Schools, and Seoul, of course, being uh, the capital of uh, South Korea. So the authors found that boys who graduated from boys' schools were significantly more likely to attend a four-year college compared with boys who graduated from co-ed schools. All of these effects remain significant after controlling for eligibility for free school lunches, prior academic achievements, and other demographic and school parameters. So even the poorest of students were still more likely if they graduated from a boys' school to attend a four-year college. Boys at boys' schools also earned significantly higher test scores compared with boys at co-ed schools. The researchers concluded that we find that single-sex schools produce a higher percentage of graduates who attended four-year colleges and a lower percentage of graduates who attended two-year junior colleges than co-educational schools. The positive effects of single-sex schools remain substantial even after we take into account various school-level variables such as teacher quality, the student-teacher ratio, the proportion of students uh, receiving uh, lunch support, and whether the schools were public or private. So this is co pretty consistent, even for teacher quality and for when the parents you know, have more money than average and can afford a private school. So the single-sex format creates opportunities that simply don't exist in a co-ed classroom. Teachers can employ strategies in an all-boys classroom which won't work as well or won't work at all in a co-ed classroom. So in the second study of its kind, the researchers at Steston University of Florida completed a three-year pilot project comparing single-sex classrooms with co-ed classrooms at the Woodward Avenue Elementary School, um, a nearby neighborhood public school for them. Students in the fourth grade at Woodward were assigned either to a single sex or co ed classroom. All relevant parameters were matched. The class sizes were all the same. The demographics were all the same. The teachers had the same training, what works and, of course, what doesn't work. On the Florida Comprehensive Assessment Test, here were the results. And what you're seeing here on screen is a percentage of students 
um, who obtained a proficient score on the Florida Comprehensive Assessment Test. So in the mixed classrooms, 37% of boys achieved a proficient score. In the single sex classrooms, so in the boys only classrooms, that number more than doubled to 86%. And girls within mixed sex uh, classrooms, 59% uh, of them achieved the proficient score. And it goes up a little, a little bit when they uh, gender segregate as well. So girls achieve the 75%. So, so what we're seeing here is this. Co-ed classrooms or, you know, this mixed gender classroom policy is far more deleterious to the learning of boys. It really, really harms boys. Remember, these students were learning the same material in the same school. So do you see how the scores reverse when boys have a male space in which to learn? And... This data certainly shows here, at least in this particular classroom, that boys are not lagging behind girls because we're stupid, as I've seen quite a couple of editorials describe boys as uh, online, or because girls have just been held back and they're actually better at all of these subjects. All of that is rubbish. The simple fact is this. When you mix the classrooms, they tend to pander to how girls like to learn. The moment you have a single sex classroom, the teacher, even when it's a female teacher, can use strategies that benefit and appeal to the way boys prefer to learn. So just in summary, boys are receiving two thirds of failing grades and are more likely to find school boring or frustrating. And the current feminized school system stifles creativity, problem solving and risk taking and so disadvantages boys. Girls tend to do better within these systems, it seems, because, well, perhaps they don't mind complying with any task set, however mindless. But female behavior is the default in the classroom, and deviance from this can result in ruin and a mental health diagnosis for boys from a very, very early age. Because we live in a society where your school grades can literally make or break you, not only do we need gender segregated schools, but that the teachers be all male within these schools. And this is the only way to ensure that tax monies are used to benefit the male half of the population as well. You see, the supposed failing of boys has an easily explanation and thankfully is resolvable. Single sex schools with male teachers for boys. Thank you very, very much. This is CS MGTOW.